Dragons, Blazely Dragon here. And today's video is going to be talking about this common misconception folks have that if something as old as there for must be good. And the only paths and practices worth following or doing are the ones that are ancient. And if you are following a path that has to be ancient, you're going to claim it as ancient, even if it may not be ancient. And <laughs> I mean, okay. So I can understand that if things have been done for a while, if you've had individuals practice and weed out some best practices by doing it over and over again, and if it survived the test of time, well, obviously it must be good enough or good to a certain extent that it was able to survive. However, in most cases, when you're talking about different practices, they're going to evolve with the time. They're going to change with the times. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, specifically, I'm talking about spirituality, religion, things like that, magical practices, because for some reason, which obviously there's multiple reasons for this, folks will try to claim their practice, their religion, as this ancient path. Oh, it's this old path, and that's the, the validation behind why it's still worth practicing, because it's been practiced for thousands and thousands of years. Well, what is it that separates us today from those of ancient times? Uh, let's take a look at the fact that there were individuals who believed that the earth was flat. Let's take a look at individuals who believed as part of healing, they needed to bleed out the bad blood out of you, and they would do things like leeching, etc., to remove the impurities. So, just because it was done a long time ago, there's a reason they kind of weeded some of those practices out and found new and, in some cases, better methods. And when you're talking about religion and spirituality, you're talking about a connection with the divine. So by studying spirituality and studying philosophy and developing a new path or a new way to look at things or a new spirituality, that's not a bad thing. That's actually kind of a good thing, in my opinion. It's okay to evolve with the times or come up with brand new ideas or even things that were inspired by the ancient past. Path. Past. <laughs> ancient paths inspired by the ancient ways and then reinvented and looked at from a new perspective. I mean, what's wrong with that? Well, why is that not okay? Let me give you an example. Some folks will say Wicca, and I'm, I'm not trying to pick on Wicca, but they'll say Wicca is this ancient path. It's been around since the dawn of time. So is there an unbroken teaching path to these ancient times? No. If it's based upon teachings that were ancient, that's fine. Folks say Gerald Gardner created it in the 50s. Others argue that he just brought it back into the light in the 50s. Whatever. Look at other ones like Druidry. So Druidry, we know, was practiced a very long time ago. But is there an unbroken connection between ancient Druidry and modern revival Druidry? Not so much. Now, some paths of Druidry, uh, for example, Obad, Order of Bards, Ogates, and Druids, uh, to which... I am a member of the order. They started a revival movement roughly 300 years ago. And even with that, you're talking about individuals who tried to revive it and passed it on until it's become what it is today. And it continues to grow and evolve and change with the times. Modern Druidry is not ancient Druidry, and that's okay. That doesn't make it less powerful or less potent. When you look at these folks from way back in the day, these ancient practices, you were limited to your ability to learn things or be exposed to things based upon your culture, your tribe, your city, the people directly around you. You know, they didn't have email or the internet. And I'm not saying just because we have email and the internet makes it all of a sudden, hey, we're so much smarter because we look it up online. You know, hey, Google it. You know, we're going to get all the answers. No, but it at least gives you exposure to consider new things, to research new things. You can order books. You can look at videos of folks talking. You can read different authors or look at different spiritualities and practices and paths. Maybe you can study with a guru or a sage or a wise one of a different path or spirituality and be inspired to create your own path, which is why a lot of folks that follow the old ways tend to be eclectic. Uh, eclectic is essentially kind of like a blending mix, kind of your own defining thing. You have an eclectic taste in music. So spirituality and eclectic taste in spirituality or an eclectic path. The wind's blowing my phone all around, sorry. 
you can have an eclectic path where you take little pieces of different paths. Now, some folks, of course, will argue with this and they are purists and they want to follow only one form and that's fine too. You know, you got to find what works for you. But my point is we can be exposed more to different things today so we can get different experiences. So to incorporate those spiritual spiritual experiences into our own customized path is not a bad thing. We can glean new insights and find new ways of connecting with the divine, with spirituality, and with the world and universe, the earth. We can find different ways of connecting. We can do it on our own, based upon our own experiences, and that's okay. So recreating these paths, having these new new age paths, this whole new age movement to have inspiration from the distant path and try to revive things, it's not a bad thing flip side of that too like i said as you're looking at stuff you're going to see like even with obad you're going to see there's going to be changes from 300 years ago to now to present day you know you're going to see things change and evolve and adapt to your new environment and you want that in my opinion in a living breathing religion spirituality path whatever you want to refer to it as. Same thing with magical practices and stuff, you know? There was actually a very uh, interesting book uh, that I never finished reading, but it was called Urban Primitive, and it was actually depicting gods and goddesses of the city. Like, I remember one of the goddesses was one that would reserve parking spaces for you because they essentially would spiritually sit in that parking space where the cars didn't park there. Very interesting concept. And... I think it's interesting to take that into consideration when you're working with the divine gods, goddesses, to think of ways that the gods and goddesses may have grown with the times or adapted to our modern age. So, yeah, when you're thinking about your own path and your own spirituality, if you're looking for guidance, and you're looking for paths to follow, yes, there's stuff to read, but take into consideration there's plenty of stuff to read and plenty of paths. And if you find yourself adapting your own spirituality, your own path, don't be discouraged. Don't think, oh, because it was something new that I essentially invented with inspiration from these other paths, it can't be good or valuable or something of substance. It can. It can absolutely be full of of substance and enriching and endearing moments for yourself and your path, your seeking, your connection with the divine. So don't be discouraged. Take what you want, find what makes sense to you, and move forward. May your path be a fruitful one. So, yeah, thank you for watching this little video rants and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it there and play to have a good day. And see you again soon.